Pikes Peak Marathon entered their 46th year in 2001 and remains today as America's ultimate challenge. Held in late August, the event attracts runners from all over the world to Manitou Springs, Colorado at the base of Pikes Peak for an entire weekend of running related activities. And with Pikes Peak looming in the distance, most runners begin thinking about the challenge itself. When you tell people you're running up the side of a mountain, they think you're crazy, and it's just something I want to be able to say I've done. I'm certainly not going to go back and say I didn't make it up to the top. And with the internet nowadays, you can't lie, so I'll have to make it. <laughs> and even if you don't, something will bring you back again. There's something about the mountain that grabs a hold of you once you've been close to it or been any part of it, if you've ever hiked it or done an ascent or a marathon. A lot of people will say, man, that's the last time I'm ever doing that one. And they end up signing up again really early, like September or October, to come back and do it again. There's something about the camaraderie and about the encouragement that you get from your fellow runners and people all the way along the course urging people on and encouraging them. It's really quite an experience. For some, the event has become part of their normal routine and serves as a reunion for fellow runners who each year take on the challenge. One group that always returns in greater numbers every year is the Peak Busters. In 1975, the Walter Stack, who's the president of our jogging club, told me that he would give me a trophy if I came up and did Pike Speak. And I thought it would be the only trophy I'd ever get in my whole life. So I decided to come. He told me I could walk most of it. And I belonged to his running club. And so I came, and I was so excited after I got to the top. All the way back on the plane, I was on such a high. And he, this other gal and I, and he said to us, why don't you get together and organize a, a group of women and then they can experience the high that you're experiencing now. While Peak Busters is serious about running, fun and fellowship seem to be the priority. How about Pikes Peak was the first race that you ever ran? One, two, three, four, five, great. Um, family thinks you're crazy. <laughs> Easy one. How, about, how many of you are single? And that would mean the rest of you are not, right? Okay. The Peak Busters meeting also gave race director Dave Zare a chance to illustrate running at altitude. Technically inclined, the temperature was roughly 55 degrees, and it's warmer here now than that. And we know if you take the uh, barometric pressure curve for various elevations above sea level that yes, uh, we get less air as we go higher. And what is it, 18% less here, right here in Manitou Springs, and about 43% less up at the top of Pikes Peak. That doesn't mean a whole lot, <clears throat> except this bottle was filled yesterday, and you can see what the air pressure does to it, ladies. 
That's how much less air is up there. This is filled and sealed. It's got silicon seal in it. This is just natural air pressure compressing this bottle. So when you get up there, I can't do it backwards. I can't do that experiment. But uh, it's going to be a very big balloon, and you don't have to be up there right now. So basically, what I'm telling you is, I hope you've trained hard, because you're not going to have a lot of O2 getting to those muscles that you're working so hard. And to help fuel those muscles, a traditional pasta dinner was available the night before each race to store up needed carbohydrates. If only oxygen were so easily stored. We've got 45 vans. They're all 15 passenger vans. And we have to do this because we have to get the runners off the mountain. Uh, they just want, run one way on Saturday and then we carry them down on the back side of the mountain uh, to get them back down to Manitou. Now we also do have some vans on Sunday, but that's only about five vans that take the workers up there. Running up the side of Pikes Peak can be a logistical nightmare. Fortunately for the runners, the event organizers are well prepared and ready to serve. Well, this is called sweat check, which isn't a very nice name. It's actually a clothing check. And we allow runners to check their bags with uh, sweats, sweat, uh, sweatshirts, pants, and they can get them at the top. And we mark them with their number, and we have a, about a thousand or more bags here that we sort up at the and so when they get up to the top and it's cold, they have something to put on. And uh, we usually take six or seven van loads full of clothing up. We've had uh, various things uh, checked here. I, sometimes people look like they're going to spend the night. We've ha we can barely fit their material in the bag, so it's kind of funny. And sometimes they have one little te teeny shirt. As the ascent start time drew near, runners began to prepare. Others were simply glad to be here. It's absolutely beautiful. I mean, you look at the mountain, it's an absolutely gorgeous mountain from down here. From the top, it's absolutely gorgeous. You look down, it's America the Beautiful stuff. Uh, you see purple, you see green. Years that I've run it, when there's a, an intense cloud cover that you run through, you get these holes, these magic holes, and Colorado Springs will be kind of glinting up at you through there, or, uh, or some part, of, you know, another mountain will be kind of coming through the cloud cover. It's absolutely beautiful. There's no other place you'd want to be on a Saturday morning. Some runners took a more simplistic view of the challenge. It's long. It's just stinking long. <laughs> With just minutes to go, the runners made their way to the start. It's all uphill from here. You know the reason that we are here, ladies and gentlemen, and we thank you very much for that. summit Pikes Peak. For most, however, it wasn't the start of a race, but rather the start of an experience. Because the bar trail is narrow, the ascent must be run in two waves to accommodate the near 1,600 runners. Thirty minutes after the first group left downtown Manitou Springs, Wave two began towing the line. Have a good run, and I'll see you all at the top in about uh, three hours, right? Okay. A uh, two count start, same as the first wave. Everybody behind the first, uh, behind the starting line. 
Best of luck to all of you. Runners ready? Go! Have a great run up the mountain, ladies and gentlemen. Have a grand time today. By the French Creek Water Station, roughly four miles into the course, Scott Elliott was joined by Matt Carpenter for a share of the lead. Both exceptional mountain runners, it was anyone's race. For most, the terrain and altitude had slowed the pace to a light jog or hike, but this race isn't about speed. And with the scenery of the barred trail surrounding them, even less attention is given to stopwatches. Pike's Peak Ascent is unique for numerous reasons, the altitude, the incline, and the terrain. Also, it might be the only race where you can see the finish line for hours. With fatigue setting in, runners made it to the Bar Camp Water Station and took comfort in the fact that they were over halfway. But in this race, the second half is by no means downhill. And it's here that the race truly becomes a challenge to each runner, and the realization that finishing is, in fact, a triumph. Every person who takes on this mountain, in the words of Rudy Fall, who organized this thing and really got it started 46 years ago, it is a challenge in itself to say that I took on Pikes Peak. And you know, that's what's in the heart and minds of most of the people who run this race. This is for the running public. This is for anyone who wants to go out there, train hard, dedicate themselves, and actually come out here and take on Pikes Peak. And taking on Pikes Peak faster than all others was Matt Carpenter. Five minutes later, Scott Elliott emerged, and behind him, an endless string of runners along Bar Trail. The race is only possible because of Bar Trail, but it's the maintenance of the trail that truly keeps the event going. It's an ongoing task that's not only essential, but a labor of love. The Marathon Committee came up with the idea of uh, starting a maintenance fund so that runners could don donate money to buy fence rails so we could repair the fence. So many hundreds of fence rails later, you know, we've, we've kind of got the fence in pretty good shape and the money st still kept coming in from the runners. So we decided to um, use that money to do repairs to the trail also. The program has evolved into a, a stewardship of many individuals and, and several groups. Um, it's become an adoption program where these people have adopted usually a mile increment of the trail. And then we would provide tools and training to that person and they would then organize their own um, group of friends or whatever, or you know, a place where they work or something like that. Above treeline, the effects of altitude were evident. A steady jog or hike from below became an effort to simply keep moving. With just two miles to go, the runners tried to stay motivated. Volunteers provided not only water and nourishment, but much needed encouragement. With a mile to go, the runners wove past the Cirque, a 15-foot drop just a few steps left of the trail. As one course description states, 
One way to end the pain is to turn left at the Cirque. Fortunately, it's here that one probably feels most alive as the body grasps for oxygen and the mind focuses on the summit. Surely the worst is over. A third of a mile doesn't sound like a long way, except of course on the 16 golden stairs on Pike's Peak. For 10, 12, 15 minutes, runners reach for the finish, seemingly almost able to touch it. But focus is essential because of, well, the snow and the ice that's coming. Finally, the summit. The goal, the experience, the challenge. Taken and met. Back in Manitou Springs, runners relaxed, celebrated, and reflected. The day was very challenging. Um, there's no way that they could have described what we were going to go through. Um, it was great to finish, um, but before I did, I got dizzy and disoriented, spurring my sleech. Um, but it was, it was, everybody was very supportive. Someone started to fall back on me and I pushed him up. I started to fall back on someone else. He pushed me back up the mountain. Um, it was a great run. Volunteers were fabulous. Um, they're all upbeat. They were cheering for us. Um, passed out water and Gatorade and um, all sorts of praise and very encouraging. Um, from the volunteers to the folks with the um, search and rescue. Um, I think search and rescue had a kazoo band um, and they were playing requests. Um, <laughs> So, um, but by then I was just having to knuckle down and one step at a time. And while the runner's day was over, the event itself was just half finished, as was the work of the coordinators and volunteers. We've got the most fantastic volunteers, no doubt about that. We've got people who've been up here for 24 hours already on the mountain. They'll be here all night again tonight. And they'll be here all day tomorrow. Uh, we've got search and rescue to provide the medical support. We've got communications who are just awesome to provide the uh, critical connectivity between all of our aid stations when we've got injured runners and that sort of thing. We've got the medical support up here. We've got a great uh, announcing system so we can recognize all of these terrific runners when they come through. It's just a, a fun, great opportunity to be involved with a race that has to be just uh, without people anywhere. As the Pikes Peak Ascent came to a conclusion, it was apparent that this weekend event really is for the runner and everything is done to help individuals accomplish their goals. Some may climb mountains just because they're there. Today, hundreds climbed a mountain because they knew they could. For me, it's, you know, I'm in my mid-40s, I'm a college professor, and I, I like to be able to do things that my students at my age can't do. 
sure I'm letting you know the old man can still get out and <laughs> do some things. So. <laughs> One runner described the Pikes Peak Marathon as the ascent without the van ride down. And it's the only marathon where the second half is, topographically speaking, all downhill. I suppose if you really want to compare the two races, you could do both, but who would do that? Introducing the Pikes Peak Doublers. They look normal. Well, I paced a friend yesterday and took it easy, did a 528. And uh, last year I did it on my birthday. I had so much fun, I wanted to see if I can have more fun. So that's why I'm doing the double. The starter for this year's Pikes Peak Marathon was six-time champion Steve Goshipin. Steve won six consecutive Pikes Peak Marathons over 25 years ago and is an honored guest of the event. turned on to Ruxton Avenue and running comfortably in third place was Matt Carpenter, winner of yesterday's Pikes Peak Ascent. This had the makings of a historic day. It was day two for many of the volunteers, but enthusiasm was still running high. Passing through an early portion of the bar trail known as the W's, runners were able to get a feel of how things were going to go and to settle into a pace. For some, they already knew they'd do okay and be back next year. It's going really good. I'm feeling good. Just I'm excited. Like 200 feet. I've been running lots of hills in Michigan, getting up to an altitude of about four, five, six hundred feet. So I figure I'm ready. I'm hoping to beat all the cutoffs and uh, go home wearing a medal. That's about the extent. <laughs> and then uh, make some reservations and come back next year. As the runners continued up Pikes Peak, work began in Manitou Springs for the finish. First aid facilities were prepared for just about anything, and hope the runners were too. They need to stay well hydrated. They need to be uh, in good shape and they need to have trained in advance. It's the people who just decide to do it on a lark that uh, usually get into trouble. Uh, the most common thing is going to be wound cleansing. People running down the hill, they're going to come down, uh, they, they fall down the mountain on their way down and they come in with blood all over them quite a bit. And they have lacerations from their head to their toe. So we'll do, uh, we don't do any suturing here in the, in the tent. If they need suturing, we send them to the hospital. Steadily the runners made it above tree line and most slowed to a walk, saving energy for the descent which, while quicker, requires strength and control.
At the summit, Matt Carpenter took a short break and continued back down the mountain, once again leading the way. Soon, more runners reached the summit, including the women's leader and defending champion, Erica Larson. During the marathon, the bar trail must be shared by those going up and those going down. And because gravity is at work, those going up defer to those on their way going down. The crisscrossing of runners adds to the sense of we're all in this together that permeates throughout the weekend. Both races become a kind of group effort for many, and it's the support of fellow runners that keep many going. While running downhill is faster and less strenuous, it can be very dangerous, requiring complete concentration. For some, this is the most mentally challenging part of the race. The course is the same going down, but at a quicker gait and less control, the rocks seem bigger and the course more narrow. In addition, the run down is under a high August sun, and water is still critical. While most had settled into a gentle stride coming down, Matt Carpenter had developed a full sprint by the time he hit Ruxton Avenue and the finish for an amazing double win. One of the first to congratulate Matt was Steve Goshapin. And after a weekend of almost 40 miles at altitude, Steve did most of the talking. Our second place finisher for the man. Nice run today, Dave. Great job. Hey, hey, A steady stream of frontrunners emerged from Bar Trail and defending her 2000 Pikes Peak Marathon win was Erica Larson. More runners were passing through the W's and fighting the steep incline toward town. People are real enthusiastic. It was a beautiful day. The best. I'd encourage anyone to come up and either run the ascent or the, or the marathon and or the ascent and the marathon. We'll see how he feels tomorrow, but he'll be back.
The marathon on the weekend was coming to an end, but for many, the accomplishments of the last two days marked the beginning of a new sense of confidence for those in the front, middle, or back of the pack. Everybody that does this race, in the words of Rudy Fall, it's a challenge in itself to take on Pikes Peak. So every one of these people that get their beautiful finisher pins and finisher medals, they deserve them, they've earned them. It's to them, it is a significant accomplishment in their life. For many of them, it is their chest every year of what they do. Uh, to, uh, it's kind of a capstone event, if you will, and they're running each year. So um, anything more than that, yeah, it's great for the winners. We love to have them. Uh, we like to recognize them for their accomplishment, but every person who finishes this race, in a way, is a winner. You, you cannot stand at the starting line and look at your turnaround point on the marathon day or your finish point for the ascent and not have a moment of anxiety. I'm going to run from here six and a half, seven miles straight line distance, but up one and a half miles in elevation. And, and not have that make a significant difference in your everyday life. And while some lives were changed, the mountain remains constant and ready for next year.